Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the June 2018 Algebra 1 Regents, specifically questions 5 through 8. In number 5, we're asked about box plots. As a reminder with box plots, there's really five topics or five um, components of a box plot. We have a minimum value, I'm going to label this Q1, we call that the first quartile. This is our median, in the not necessarily the middle of the box, but when I say... Uh, you know, somewhere inside the box is our median. We call that quartile two as well. And the right edge of the box is quartile three. All, all the way on the right is our maximum, the largest value from the data set. So these five make up the box plot. Um, the three quartiles make up the box with a little drop down line for the median. And uh, sometimes it's called the box and whisker for the min and max values. So for S, the third quartile, very simply, obviously we're looking right here which appears to be 90. If you're ever asked to make a box plot, recall that uh, one of our stats can be used and it actually tells you all five of these values. That's reading a box plot. For six, one of these where they're kind of asking you how would you set this up? We're told the price of strawberries and the price for raspberries. Now look carefully here. These are ones that people get wrong just because almost like reading comprehension we want to make sure that strawberries are called X and raspberries are called Y. If you look at choice three and four, they're very simply, and you can see someone making that mistake reading it quickly. Um, they flip-flopped X and Y, so those can't be correct. So now it comes down to the symbol. Is it going to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to? The key phrasing is that you have $10. We usually say look out for the vocab word, something like maximum, minimum, at least. In this case, we don't see anything, but just thinking about it conceptually, if someone has $10, that's really saying you have a maximum of $10 to spend, right? Obviously, we can't spend more than 10 if we literally only have $10, meaning choice one makes the most logical sense. Okay, for six, six is really applying sequences. We're told row three, and row six. I like to treat it like one of these problems. Now be careful in calling the common difference six here. Obviously there's a gap. It's really going up two each time and you could double check it does work. Plus two, plus two, plus two, I end at 37. That tells me the common difference is two. Now since we're so close, we could just work backwards to find a one, let's subtract two, let's subtract two. We get 27. Now being that this is arithmetic, I can now actually write the sequence, the explicit rule, this is called. This is given to you on your reference sheet, if you do forget this. D times N minus 1, and this was A1. Um, we can clean this up if we like. We could say 2N, that's going to be minus 2 plus the 27 or plus 25. Now, if I want to find A sub 20, because I said how many would be in row 20. Very simply, since I have the explicit rule, this is why we did all this work, to make it easy on the end, we just plug in a 20. And that should say 25, not 5. And when we plug this in, we're going to get 40 plus 25 is going to give us our final answer of 65, choice 1. Now, do you have to go through all this effort and sequences? Obviously, it's a multiple choice. The other option is just very simply on your calculator. Once you notice the pattern, just counting all the way up to 20 carefully, um, and you can arrive at 65 that way as well. For eight, <clears throat> we're asked which order pair is not a solution. This is a calculator question. We're going to type this into y equals, and we're going to observe the table. And obviously, we want to be careful. This one says which one is not. Therefore, all three of them, or three of them, should appear in our table. We're looking for the one that doesn't. So if we type this in, I see a 0, 4 right away. I see a 5, 14. I see a negative 1. I see 8, which means since this is a function, I know that negative 1, 6 is not going to appear there. Now, this one, obviously, you won't see in your standard table. If you ever want to change what your table goes by, notice this looks like it's going by halves. If you hit the addition sign on your table, you get a little screen on the bottom that says delta TBL. 
That's basically saying what do you want your table to change by or to go by. Standard is one. You could say something like 0.5. So if you were really curious, hey, I wonder if I just want to double check, is that right? Um, if you hit plus, change it to 0.5, you actually do see that 1.5 comma 1.75 is a point on this graph. It's in our table.